In today's video, we're going over what the utilities are like in Southwest Washington, and I'm actually gonna share with you our exact utility bill costs. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. Welcome or welcome back to Living in the Pacific Northwest with Hal Bird. I'm Hal Bird and I am a licensed realtor and relocation specialist in Oregon and Washington. And I help people from all over the country relocate to our area. So if that's something you're interested in discussing and it's something you're considering, whether you're moving to or within Southwest Washington and the Portland metro area, I would be more than happy to help. My Zoom link is in the description below. And if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing, make sure you're texting me at 360-818-4438. I absolutely love to hear from you guys and answer your questions and get the ball rolling. Whether you're relocating next month or next year, it's a great time to just reach out, open the conversation, let's start to build a relationship so I understand your needs and wants and can most effectively help you as your local realtor. Now, this isn't the most sexy or exciting or engaging topic, but part of this channel is to show you the real, the behind the scenes, the things that you need to know. And last week I had a client from Southern California, Los Angeles specifically, ask me, what are the utility costs here? What can we expect? And I know that some of my California clients have utility bills in the summer that are over a thousand dollars so it is a big chunk of their budget and i thought it'd be really fun to open up be transparent and share with you what our utility costs are and what you can kind of expect the rates how they work some fun tidbits about it so this is going to be a concise video but i think you're really going to enjoy this so whether you're in the southern part of the United States where you constantly have to run your AC, think New Orleans, Texas, Florida, or you're in the Northeast and you have to pay for heat throughout the winter and it gets real cold there, this video I think is gonna be really, really refreshing. So we're gonna start with the lowest to the most expensive. So actually our cheapest, for myself and my husband personally, our cheapest bill is our water bill. And part of that reason is because we live in an unincorporated area in Vancouver, which means that our sewer is provided separately. So depending on the municipality that you're in, you'll either have a combined sewer and water bill in the city limits of Vancouver, for instance, or if you live in unincorporated Vancouver or Ridgefield, you may have water from one source and your sewer cost is paid separately. So ours is paid separately. Our water is provided in unincorporated Vancouver by Clark Public Utilities, which is also the electric company, and we'll get there. <laughs> so if you live in an area where you do not have municipality or city provided water, then Clark Public Utilities, which is our Southwest Washington's local electric company, then it will be provided to you by Clark Public Utilities. Now, one thing to, to note about Clark County that's a little bit different, especially if you are coming from Oregon, specifically the Portland metro area, because there's a lot of people moving just across the rivers from Portland to Southwest Washington. Almost all of the water used in Clark County comes from underground aquifers, mostly in the Salmon Creek watershed. In contrast, Portland gets most of its supply from above ground sources like the Bull Run Reservoir. So kind of a fun fact, also the wells in the Salmon Creek watershed average about 250 feet in depth, which I've heard makes our water pretty good quality, but there's definitely debate online between who has better water, Portland or Southwest Washington. So our water bill for the last 12 months, of running 12 months, averaged $19.29, which is, I know, crazy. And you can see the averages for it broken down between water and sewer here from the city of Vancouver. So this list talks about the increase in Vancouver water costs from 2023 to 2024. This is what you see up in gray here within the city limits. So slight increase from an average of $34 to an average of $35. You can see that the city of Vancouver also provides sewer service. 
and then they have stormwater fees. So if you live in within the city limits of Vancouver, you can expect a bill that's around $100 a month. And then right below that, you can see where it says CPU, Clark Public Utilities, slash CRWWD. That's the Clark Regional Wastewater District, slash Clark County. So again, unincorporated areas. Average water bill is $23.80. See, I thought we were doing really well, but actually we're just slightly below average. And then you can see the average sewer cost of $45. We'll talk about sewer. And they compared cities around the Southwest Washington area or what Jared and I call the five boroughs, but they also compared places like Bellevue, Seattle, Portland. So Portland's average water cost is $77 a month. Compare that to Washougal, which is the most expensive water in our area is $42. So the takeaway here is that water is very reasonably priced and we don't have water restrictions. So there's no limits on watering your grass or anything like that. Obviously water is abundant here if you're coming from other places outside of the Northwest. That is a question that I get fairly often is, do we have water restrictions? We don't. You can wash your car in your driveway without your neighbors looking at you like you're crazy. They might wonder why you're washing your car if it's about to rain and Jared definitely likes to keep our cars clean and I, the neighbors always comment about <laughs> him cleaning the cars and on a side note that's actually one of the reasons we left California you can check out this video our journey to Vancouver to learn more about why we left California for Washington so our next bill utility that is the next highest cost is our trash bill and there's something to, important to note here. When we moved here, it was the first time that I had seen trash done like this. I mean, not that I've lived a zillion places to have some wide berth of knowledge about trash service, but in the suburbs where I used to live in Southern California, you had a recycling can that was like, I think 96 gallons. And then you also had a matching sized trash can. And that was just standard. Didn't think anything different of it. Here, the starting or standard service is a 32 gallon trash size and a 96 gallon recycling. So if you want to have more capacity for trash, then you can see how it changes based on the size of your trash can. And when we first moved here, I was like, there's no way we're gonna make this trash can work. It's way too small. And I found that we end up recycling more and have just about the right amount of trash that it, it works. We've never had to increase the size of our trash can. So we have the 32 gallon service, which comes out to an average over the last 12 months of $24.88. Most of Southwest Washington is serviced by Waste Connections. If you are in the city of Camas, then you have a sort of a different setup, not directly with Waste Connections. So just something to be aware of. So now let's get down and dirty with sewer. <laughs> We paid an average of $44.25 a month over the last 12 months for sewer service. We are serviced by Clark Regional Wastewater District, again, unincorporated Vancouver. And you're either gonna be serviced by your municipality or Clark Regional Wastewater District. Those are the two options for sewer. So like we showed on this chart, city of Vancouver supplies their own sewer. You can see that Clark Regional Wastewater District, an average of $45, so we're right around the average there. Compare that to Bellevue, $104, double the price of what Vancouver and unincorporated areas of Clark County are. Portland, $103. Seattle, $150. So there's a lot of cities that are averaging it. Their water bills are higher because you have a combined water and sewer bill, and it's really the sewer cost that's expensive and not the water. Locally, Washougal is notably high at $94.22 a month. So that's something I tell my clients that are thinking about moving to Washougal. If you are price sensitive or utility sensitive, you may wanna know that your water slash sewer bill in Washougal will be higher than other parts. It's the highest in Clark County. The lowest in Clark County is unincorporated areas. Now we'll do a separate video on wells and septics. So let me know in the comments if that's a video that you want, but I do have a fair amount of clients that are looking for acreage property. And if you're looking in rural areas or at larger land, you may be on a well or you may be on septic. And so septic obviously totally different, but there are a fair amount of properties. Actually, my team just showed a property this week that is in the Lincoln area 
of Vancouver, of the downtown area, kind of in between downtown and Hazeldow Lakeshore. And there was a little pocket there in the Lincoln neighborhood that is in unincorporated Vancouver. And the sewer is at the street, but this property was on septic and public water. So you see some of those in areas that are really close to the city limits of Vancouver. So you're unincorporated, but you're very close to the city limits. You can see that there. And then rural properties. So anywhere, if you're looking on like Google Maps, that's in a green area, it's more than likely gonna be on a well and septic. So that's also something to keep in mind. Not a monthly cost, but you do have maintenance costs for them. Our next highest utility is internet, which isn't didn't used to be considered a utility, but obviously these days, it's few and far between. I think I've ever only seen one house that didn't have Wi-Fi already set up. So internet. Internet, our average is about $50. It's $50.03. And we paid for, I believe it's either 300 gigabits or 500 giga gigabytes, gigabits. What is it? Gigs. Sync it. So we have pretty fast internet. It allows us to work from home, stream, have multiple devices. We've got three laptops in the house. We've got smart TVs, Alexa. We've got multiple tablets and cell phones, and we have never had a problem with internet speed. So Xfinity is the most widely available internet service. You can get gig speed. I've even seen faster than gig speed in some areas for Xfinity. And there are other options emerging like CenturyLink, Quantum Fiber, Starlink, Ziply fiber. So there are other options, but pretty much anywhere that you're looking, you're either going to have Xfinity, unless you're in a very rural area, and then you would be able to link to satellite like Starlink or Hughes or, you know, there's a couple other popular ones. But internet is not an issue here. I've had so many clients say, well, we want to live in Camas, but we have to make sure we have high speed internet. And I'm like, where do you think you're moving? Because Southwest Washington is very much suburban. You're not moving to the sticks or the forest. There are tons of trees. So if you're coming from somewhere that's more dry and barren and desert-like, it's going to feel like you are. Like I'm still overwhelmed, like pleasantly overwhelmed when I look around and I see all the greenery in the trees, but there is no concern for high-speed internet. Even in the rural areas, it's gotten significantly better over the last few years. It's really not a concern. I have very many clients that work remote that live in rural areas and have not had one complaint about the internet service. So that brings us to natural gas. And you can start to see we're whittling away with what the most expensive utilities are. And I know you're wondering about electric. We're getting to that after natural gas. Our average natural gas bill has been $86.88. And I wanna preface this because this is probably one of the bills that's going to vary the most depending on a few things. Number one, do you have a gas furnace or do you have an electric heat pump? Anything that's new construction, pretty much built after 2021, is going to have an electric heat pump because of the 2021 Washington Energy Codes. If you've been watching this channel, you've maybe heard me mention them. So those energy codes didn't ban natural gas, but they, the codes very much discouraged the use of it. You have to have certain energy efficiency. It's like a point system from what I understand. And so most builders know that people like having a gas stove and a gas fireplace. So they do enough energy efficiency wise to get points for that. But unless you're building custom, you're probably not gonna see a gas furnace in any homes that are built after 2021. So it really does discourage the use of gas for heating, meaning for space heating and also for water heating. So if you're if getting a tankless water heater is important to you, then you want to pay attention to if there's gas at the property and if you can convert to a gas water heater because electric tankless water heaters are almost useless. Any plumber will tell you, you do not want an electric tankless water heater. So most of the new construction, regardless of price point, you will see a tank water heater. And it's not because the builder doesn't want to put tankless in, it's because of the energy codes that Washington has passed. And then the last thing I'll say about natural gas is that the company is the same no matter where you live in Southwest Washington, and that's Northwest Natural. So that brings us to the probably the most anticipated utility and bill, and that is electric. Now, all of Southwest Washington is serviced by Clark County for electric, unless you're off-grid and you have solar, and we'll touch on solar too. 
The biggest thing to know about electric, especially when I just talked about the Washington energy codes. And so if you're already thinking, if you're, you know, kind of ahead of me a little bit, okay, so if I buy new construction after 2021, I don't have a gas furnace. That means that my space heating and my water heating is all done electric. Those bills must be crazy. Why does anyone buy new construction? No. And the reason for that is, and I'm saying no, the bills aren't crazy. The reason for that is, is that our electric rates are extremely affordable, Washington and Oregon both. But since we're talking about Southwest Washington utilities specifically, we have some of the lowest electric rates in the country. We actually just got a rate increase this year in 2024 from 8.4 cents a kilowatt hour to right now it's 8.79 cents a kilowatt hour. So compare that to places like California where my parents live, my mom's cheapest electric rate is about 32 cents a kilowatt hour. And if she uses it during peak hours, which we do not have here, you pay the same electric rate, no, regardless of the time of day, regardless of the day of the week, that's your electric rate. But in Southern California, where my parents live, they pay up to, I think, 64 cents is their like peak hour utility rate. So at any given time, they are anywhere from four to eight times more expensive for electric there in Southern California than we are here in Washington. Also notably, my grandparents also live in, well, they live in Central California. And we were there visiting and we got to talking about electric rates and they were complaining about their, you know, property taxes and their electric utility rates. And um, my grandmother's husband pulls out their electric bill and he's running down all the different fees and funds that they're paying into as part of their monthly cost. So they have like a wildfire prevention fee. They have a mandatory participation in like all these different programs. So like five different programs that to that totaled their cheap electric bill at $300 here. So not only do you pay the same rate regardless of the day of week or the time of day, but you also have a basic service charge. There are two line items on our electric bills. One is your usage and the other is your monthly service fee of $19. So over the last year, our electric monthly cost was $90.29 and that is with an electric vehicle and our electric vehicle probably adds about $30 a month to our electric bill and for that $30 of charging we drive about 1500 miles a month because obviously I'm out showing all of you houses so that you too can become southwest Washington residents and residents of the Pacific Northwest. So you can see here, I'm gonna put this chart up. You can see every state and what their utility costs are. And you can tell Oregon and Washington obviously have some of those lowest rates. This is probably the easiest thing to compare. If you wanna know what you might be paying in Southwest Washington for your electric bill, just go look at your electric bill, take however many kilowatts you used and multiply it by 8.79 cents and you'll get a rough idea and add $19 and you'll get a pretty close idea if you have you know if you're moving like for like if you're not downsizing or upsizing when you move to Washington. One of the reasons that our rate is so low and I think this this is really good for people who obviously people don't want to spend more than they have to on their utilities but in addition to the cost being low one of the nice things too is that our electricity generation is also very clean. We get about half of our power from BPA, the Bonneville Power Administration, and the Bonneville Dam. And so that's all hydroelectric power, which is very clean, very efficient. And so I feel really great about our electric bill because not only is it inexpensive, but it's also very friendly to the environment and just a great way to generate power. So not only is our electric rate extremely low in the country, one of the lowest, but it's also very green. And so I just love that. I think that's so cool. So that brings our total across water, sewer, natural gas, trash, internet, and electric to $315.62 a month. Wow. Now, of course, your mileage is going to vary. We are very liberal in our use of natural gas. So we run our gas fireplace almost every day, even in the summer. We just love the ambiance. We love being cozy to the point that Jarrett likes being cozy, but not hot. So we have our natural gas fireplace on. Are the like environmentalists gonna come at me in the comments for this? For hope, I 
How dare you? We have our natural gas fireplace on and we usually have a window or like a sliding door open for fresh air. So we like fresh air and cozy. And we keep our house pretty, I would say modestly heated. So I know that there are some people who think the universal proper temperature for a house, winter or summer is 68 degrees. We keep our house at night in the low 60s, between like 62, 64. And then in the summer, we usually keep our AC is set around like 72. So we're not cooling to the max cooling and we're also not heating to the max heating, if that makes sense. So we're pretty, I don't know, conservative in our use other than the natural gas, just because we love a fireplace. So hope that gives you some context. Hope that helps you in determining what you might expect when it comes to budgeting for your new home in Southwest Washington regarding utilities. The biggest budget item if you're moving from somewhere that charges income tax is obviously the income tax savings, but that's for another video. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that video. We would love to speak to you, my team and I, about your relocation. So if you are considering a move to the Portland metro area or Southwest Washington, please reach out, shoot us a text, email. You can book a Zoom with us. There's so many ways to reach out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. If you love behind the scenes, my stories are, I think, really fun and informative. So make sure you go follow over there like this video, subscribe, check to make sure you're still subscribed. And if Southwest Washington and the Portland metro area isn't your jam, we are expanding our team all up the I-5 corridor. So whether you're looking at Tacoma, Olympia, Seattle area, we have people that can help you there. So make sure to reach out for all of your Washington needs and Oregon for that matter. So without further ado, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time. Ciao. Anything else to say about natural gas? I would say that Sadly and foolishly, they always stick the damn water heater in the garage, taking up, taking away precious garage oh, square footage. Did they mess up your garage? Would you want it to go in your closet? <laughs> no, but uh, the garage is in my closet. Uh, uh, exactly, <laughs> it's my closet. <laughs> the garage is definitely, definitely shared space.